everyone. So in today's video, I have a lot of reviews that you all are owed. I have a bunch of new makeup releases right here in front of me, and we are going to be doing, I would say, not quite in-depth reviews because there's just a lot here, but not quite speed reviews. I'm gonna try and be as detail-oriented as possible. You guys know how my channel goes. Natural light demos of all of the products I'm talking about. I am very familiar with these items. Have been using some of these items for more than a month. I hope you guys find this video so helpful. And if you do, definitely make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you enjoy it, I would love to have you back. My name's Amanda. Uh, make sure to subscribe. I'm first going to start off with a product that I've been teasing and talking about for a very long time. I know everyone has pretty much reviewed this palette already, but here's the thing. Because I was so impressed with it, I wanted to make sure that as I consistently used it, that I wasn't getting tired of it. I had a feeling I would love it. I had a feeling that it could be one of the best eyeshadow palettes that I've ever used, but I can't use it for a week and then come on here and say that. You know what I mean? Now that it's been a while, I feel very comfortable saying that this is absolutely a holy grail eyeshadow palette for me. This eyeshadow palette is what I wanted the Makeup by Mario's Ethereal Eyes palette to be. If you guys aren't familiar with that review, I'll leave it linked down below, but I definitely enjoyed the shimmers within that palette, but the mattes were just chalky. And overall, I just thought they were forgettable um, and not something that I wanted to reach for. I would find them kind of skipping on my eyes, looking just, in general, a little bit more dry. But now within the I Need a Nude palette from Natasha Denona, I don't even know if I said the name of the palette. Excuse me. I Need a Nude palette, Natasha Denona. So what I have just been loving to do with this palette is literally the eye look that I have going. For me, this is like the perfect everyday eyeshadow neutral palette that leans a touch cooler mixed with a bunch of wet, glossy looking eyeshadows. So clearly, if you're not familiar with my channel or you're not familiar with uh, the kind of shimmer that I really enjoy, I enjoy a shimmer that looks wet. I love that reflection. I love a good metallic too, but what I personally have leaned towards over the years is something that invokes this kind of glossiness, a wet reflection. There's something natural about it. And I don't even just mean necessarily from a makeup standpoint. It feels like it could happen in nature more readily, if that makes sense. Creates a look for me that is something that I want to go back to over and over. Anyway, I'm gonna take a step back here and just talk about the formulas themselves. The shades Sheen and Mia are both a little bit more of a subdued wet topper. They have way less base pigment to them. Actually, today I have Sheen all over my eyes. It's very close to something like Space Cowboy from Urban Decay. If you're familiar with the kind of moon dust formula, definitely similar to that. You're getting a lot less base pigment and more of that wet glossy glitter throughout. Delilah is actually pretty similar as well to something like Lithium from the moon dust line but you're also getting more metallics. This shade right here, Ella, is very, very beautiful. Filigree is one that I'm reaching for a lot. It has a little bit more chocolatiness to it, whereas Ella is a little bit taupier. Across the board, these taupes, these more kind of desaturated, cool tone shades are something that I love and reach for nearly every time I do my makeup. And personally, Muse has been, it's a little bit more of like a straight glitter, but I have found that you're really able to get quite a sophisticated glittery top coat kind of look with it, rather than something that is very glittery and kind of all the glitters stick together and then you're left with a very impactful choppy glitter look. It definitely has texture to it, but I like that you're able to finesse the glitters a little bit more and get a little bit more of a scattered effect. Rather than again, like some glitters that tend to just look a little bit chunkier. And listen, I don't actually mind a chunky glitter either, but just for everyday looks, these are the kind of glitters that I'm looking for. Typically, if I'm using this palette, I'm going for this kind of a look. Silhouette is the deepest shade in the palette and the 
only critique I have of this palette is I do wish there was one more shade that was just a little bit darker than Silhouette. I would love like a slate color in here, even a black. I mean, everyone likes a black shadow, a matte black shadow. All that is to say is that if you have been waiting to purchase this based on whether or not I absolutely love it, here you go. I absolutely love it. It's almost like my brain got put into a palette, which is just, you know, it's what I wanted the Ethereal Eyes palette to be. When I saw that palette, I was like, there's no way this is not going to be a Holy Grail palette. Little did I know that the real deal was just right around the corner. I'm gonna talk about this concealer because <laughs> it matches my shirt. It is the new serum concealer from Tower 28. Now, if you're new to my channel and you have not heard the concealer spiel, buckle up. Believe me, it is definitely worth listening to. For people that have watched my channel for a long time, I think you need to listen to this as well because I am typically someone that despises most concealers. <laughs> Really, not despise, but I'm just, I'm not impressed. I'm very difficult to please, I would say, when it comes to concealers. I'm just very picky. The reason being is that I have more deep set under eyes. I have hollowness. Most concealers, no matter how drying they are, no matter how light reflecting they say they are, they do not give me a smooth, almost kind of filled in look to the under eyes. Sometimes if I turn my head, it can actually make my under eyes look more deep set and more hollow. And that's really just based like formula to formula. Most just do not work for me is what I'm trying to say. This concealer is so special. What I would say is that if you do have more deep set hollow under eyes, or you're someone that in general wants a concealer that feels really skin loving, has this really second skin close to the skin feel, you are going to absolutely love this one. What I am always impressed by with this concealer is how much coverage it has. It really does have a ton of coverage. I always apply way more than I really need to. It's so thin and serum-like, but reflects light back in a way that makes the under eyes look incredibly smooth. This barely creases on me. I mean, we're talking very little creasing for the amount of hydration I'm getting, which I think is what makes this a standout in my opinion, is the way it wears, obviously the way it looks, but the fact that it doesn't really readily want to crease on itself. I've not powdered my under eyes at all and I'm just always impressed by how flat my under eyes look. I have heard people talking about this launch from Tara 28. I have, but here's the deal. This is one of the absolute best launches of this fall, hands down. I know so many of you will absolutely love this, the Kosas Revealer Concealer. I still, I mean, listen, that's still a holy grail for me. I will absolutely repurchase. I still use it all of the time, but if you want to try something different, this is so beautiful and I think you will also love it. By the way, this does have caffeine in it as well. And I think caffeine in a concealer formula, I'm starting to realize like generally my under eyes really like. It can kind of like depuff the area. That is just a bonkers good concealer. When I tried that concealer, I was just like, damn. Fall makeup launches, you know, sometimes they're just not hitting and that concealer definitely hits. Okay, but not all launches can be winners. So let's talk about one that I just wasn't a fan of. The new Makeup by Mario concealer. I don't know where it is. I have it somewhere around here. It made my under eyes, like the bot, like my bottom lash line, kind of like, you know, the eye socket right under there. It made it look puffy and big and a little bit dry. It was a new experience for me. Like, you know, we're getting older every day. But I looked in the mirror after I had that concealer on and I was like, I've never been this aware of my anatomy in that way as when I put that concealer on it. And listen, it was just a very weird experience and I just did not want to wear it after that. I don't know what to say about it. I mean, 
I have been, I, I hate to say this, but I've just been really consistently disappointed by a lot of Makeup by Mario launches. I didn't like the new foundation. I thought the blushes were kind of lackluster. I don't know what to say here because Makeup by Mario during the first launch of products, actually I would say like the second and third launch of products, some holy grails, absolutely stunning formulas, but it just feels like every time I pick up a new release, I'm just kind of becoming disappointing. Like those new glosses, the, I forget the plumping glosses too, like really a ton of pigment, very awkward looking on the lips. I don't know what to say about it. Just not a fan. Um, of the past few launches. And I know that is somewhat controversial to say, but I am picky and I think that's why a lot of you guys like me. So speaking of new launches, I have two different foundations here. I think I'm gonna start with one that a lot of you wanted me to try out. So the Shiseido Revital Essence Skin Glow Foundation. The Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting, as well as the original, those are holy grail foundations for me that I've literally used for years, have repurchased for years, and are consistently one of my top recommended makeup products on my channel, period. When Shiseido decided to come out with a new foundation, I was obviously very excited, but hesitant because they had already come out with two almost perfect formulas, in my opinion. I just had very high expectations for it. Here's the thing with this guy. I am wearing it on my skin today. This foundation is very similar to some of the foundations in my rotation that I talk about all of the time, love, and know very well. If you are a fan of Kogundo Aqua Foundation, of the Makeup Forever Reboot Foundation, it's one of the first makeup items that I've used that really takes the inspiration of that skincare texture and actually applies it and executes it in a way that blows my mind. This goes onto the skin truly feeling like a serum. It's so thin, immediately sinks in, offers about a light to medium coverage. So the Synchro Skin line is more of a medium coverage. This is a little bit lighter, but it sits even closer on the skin, beautiful. I mean, if you're someone that just wants that skincare glow, this, like look no further, you got it in this. I will say, I wish it built up more readily. Um, I wish like it, it gave me more coverage and it was more versatile in that way. However, like it, is kind of the epitome of really, really good looking skin that does not look like a lot of product. You know, especially with a lot of skincare, skin tints, sometimes they, they tend to have a heft. And the next one that I'm going to talk about definitely has a little bit more heft to it. This one doesn't really have that heft. It definitely leans more serum essence realm. I think it's very, very good. Do I think it's better than the Radiant Lifting or the Synchro Skin? I would say no, I don't think it's better, but it also is kind of filling another category for me and I'm really, really liking where it's fitting into my routine. Um, I think some people don't want a full on medium coverage and I would say it doesn't even give you like a super radiant finish. This finish to me feels more like glowy satin. I think we have a winner. Um, and by the way, this is the shade 140. It's a great shade for me, um, but yeah. Another beautiful launch from Shiseido. Shall we talk about Seal? This is um, a new line from Nikki DeRost. She started Rowan back in the day, but she's now come out with a new brand. Um, looking like they're focusing on uh, SPF specifically within, within makeup, which I think is definitely a trend. Um, and they're, it's, the products are coming out at a good time. This is just more so my commentary on the timing of the brand and kind of what they're all about. You know, another clean beauty brand, you gotta have a differentiator. And I think that the differentiator of having SPF in their products works. Like I see where it's going. However, I just gotta make like a disclaimer because this is just what I think and like what I wanna promote on my channel. Please do not rely on any of these products for sunscreen. I think it's just nice to have the added sunscreen. You know, it's just kinda like 
sprinkles on top of makeup, but I would never rely on either of these products specifically for my sunscreen. That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. Now, granted, these are so good. I'm very, very impressed with the formulas. So the Tinted Serum, the Tint and Protect. Um, I have the shade Light uh, 03, I believe. Decent shade match for me, like a touch too dark, maybe, but in general, this really glides onto the skin quite beautifully. It has a way of blurring on the skin. It doesn't feel like a heavy, greasy kind of sunscreen texture. I would say it's most similar in my mind to something like the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint, but more coverage, I would say. I just feel more perfected with this than I did with the one from Ilia. That being said, it is quite glowy. So I think this is best geared towards someone with dry skin, but if you are looking for a really glowy medium coverage, something that you could just like apply all over the skin with fingers, this is going to be a great option for you. I feel like it's very skin loving as well. It feels good on the skin, especially when I'm more dry. I like that I can put this all over and then kind of take down the shine with a little bit of powder, knowing that under all the rest of my makeup, this is kind of keeping my skin in check as far as like, you know, moisture levels. Honestly, I think it's really, really nice. Kind of reminds me of a more clean, natural, slightly more glowy version of like the skin tint from Beauty Blender, which I really like that one too. I was just really impressed by um, how perfected my skin looked with this. However, I will say probably not for flash photography. And the blush, the blush and protect. I have mine in the shade Christy. I am wearing it on my skin today. By the way, I'm wearing Shiseido Foundation, Terra 28 Concealer, and then I'm actually wearing the Refai Lip Blush in Cinnamon. I literally just picked it up today. This isn't a new product. I've told you guys that I really like Canyon, but this shade, ugh, so freaking good. Very, very good. Can you tell that I'm like kind of torn about fall? I'm like, from here up, I'm like fall. And then from here down, I'm like, it's still summer. Anyway, getting back to the Seal Blush. This is so beautiful. I love how it's a serum kind of texture. It spreads so beautifully and evenly on the skin. Just a very easy to work with liquid blush. Shears out really readily and prettily. It's not one of those liquid blushes where you're like, oh crap, there's way too much. It's kind of staining the skin. It's a very easy to work with product. Definitely can be used with fingers. I mean, I'm seeing like the line itself feels very throw it in your bag kind of tap it on the cheeks it's a very easy to work with formula i'm gonna apply a little bit more on just to show you guys it just like the way it kind of melts right into the skin you can see it adds a little touch of a glow it spreads like really spreads over the skin and I enjoy that the performance of these products don't suffer because of the mineral SPF in here. It feels like they're both kind of working together within the formula. Um, SPF or not, I just think it's a good liquid blush and I've really been using it a ton. Now, I actually didn't use this product. I could use a little bit. Actually, I don't have a brush down here. But the In Beauty Face Glaze Bronzer Gel Cream. I have been using this actually as like a liquid bronzer. And I'm gonna say like, if you're a fan of like the Glowgasm Beauty Light Wands from Charlotte Tilbury, but you want that in a bronzer form, look no further. Also, you get 0.85 ounces, which is definitely more than you're gonna get with like the Charlotte Tilbury um, Beauty Light Wands. But this is just really pretty definitely better than like the deep bronzy drops which I'm you know this is kind of similar I like this more than the in beauty face glaze like the bronzer version of this I think blends really beautifully on top of foundation and overall I'm just finding it's it's a good one I think for folks that want to apply a little bit of this into their moisturizer before sunscreen or even apply a little bit of this into foundation on top of foundation. I just think it's a well-formulated product. And if you're looking for something similar to this, I can see you really enjoying it. I wish it came out earlier in the summer so I could have been using it all over my face to kind of match with my self-tan. 
because I could definitely see myself using this product for that. But using it as kind of a liquid bronzer on top of makeup has been really nice. And it, like, I wasn't expecting it to blend as beautifully as it does doing that. So I think that's a good one as well. A couple of products from uh, Ritual Defee, and then I have a fragrance favorite, um, like a holy grail fragrance favorite that I'm gonna talk about in a second. I have uh, the Thorn Oils, the Peptide Plump Cream Lip Oils, as well as their new Levitation Lash. Both new lashes from Ritual Defee. I really like both, but starting off with the Levitation Lash, it's just a really nice, fluffy mascara. It offers a lot of lift to my lashes. I'm not noticing any weird crumbling when I'm using it. It reminds me kind of of the Rowan Cake Mascara, if you guys are familiar with that one. I've, I have really like that one for more of that fluffy kind of everyday, I don't know, angel lash kind of look. This gives me a very similar um, effect. It, it is natural bristles. They're very short, more of a straight wand. So again, very similar to the wand from the Rowan line. Really good for length. And I'm just finding if I want... Um, a lash that, again, just is giving me a little bit more of that fluffy look rather than a really separated, um, defined look. This is what I will go for. Um, I really like the length. I think it's a really good one. And if you typically like a natural bristle uh, mascara, I think there's a chance you'll really like that one. And the Thorn Bite Lip Creams. These are so pretty. I have not heard enough people talk about them. I actually have been using Rose Dew, this one, like all the time to prep my lips. They have such a pretty texture. Um, you definitely get a little bit more of the lip oil slip to them, but they're not slippy. They almost kind of have a gel lip oil serum thing going on. When they say they're a cream, I notice that kind of creaminess within the actual shades. And these shades are beautiful. The pigmentation is actually way more than I was expecting. They're kind of like a mix between a liquid lipstick and a lip oil, in my opinion. It's like, I don't know, I was telling you guys a little bit earlier about the Makeup by Mario plumping glosses and how they had so much pigment and it just kind of looked awkward on the lips. Ritual Defee was able to kind of create a perfect balance with these. It definitely has more pigment, but they sheer out on the lips and smooth out in a really flattering way. They feel very nourishing. Um, I think it's actually quite a unique formula. Definitely notice this kind of um, more like plump effect to my lips when I'm using this to prep them. Um, it's definitely a good one and I notice a difference when I'm using it consistently. I will say that there's a little bit more of like an herbal kind of lavender scent to them. So if you don't like you know, if you're just like a vanilla person and you don't want to try out something different, this does have like the Ritual de Vie scent to them. So I did want to mention that. Speaking of scents, a new Holy Grail. I got the travel size and the travel size is almost gone and will definitely purchase the full size. It's Fleur, father figure. I know a lot of people have been talking about this, but here's the deal. If you're a fan of like Glossy AU, if you like Missing Person from Fleur, even if you like um, Dead Cool Taunt, if you like Dead Cool Taunt, this to me has that muskiness that I love out of all of those fragrances, that kind of skin musk scent. It just takes on this masculine edge that is so good. It's woodsy, but still sweet and still has a nice skin musk thing to it. I personally am someone that really doesn't like many men's colognes. I know that might sound crazy. A lot of them are just like too much for me. This is like the best men's cologne taken down a notch and then kind of like this unisex skin musk gorgeousness is like added into it. But it still, it doesn't feel too masculine though. It walks this fine line. I love it. I really cannot stop using it. I think if you're a fan of Missing Person from Fleur, there's a very, very good chance that you're going to like this because it just has that close to skin smell to it. I think it might be in stock. I'm going to leave links to all the products that I talked about in today's video down below, 
but I think it is in stock right now. But overall, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed um, a look into a lot of new releases and more of just like a final review of them rather than first impressions, which I do have some first impressions videos coming soon. Um, let me know what new makeup releases you'd like to see first impressions on, but these are kind of my final thoughts on these ones. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.